Witness, Bartender Bruce, a charter member in the fraternity of dreamers. A bartender whose passion is mixing the perfect drink, but who is conspired against by bar owners, demanding patrons, and a world full of critics and the unrelenting hands of a clock. But in just a moment, bartender Bruce will enter a world without bar owners or patrons or clocks or anything else. He'll have a world all to himself without anyone. This is the Cocktail Zone. My name is Bruce, and I've been working bar in hell for an eternity. In that time, I've learned a trick or two that I'd like to pass on to you. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this spectacular Halloween edition of Bar Talk and Cocktails. We've got a lot of ground to uncover. <laughs> This is a national emergency. Important instructions will follow. NORAD emergency alert. Attention all citizens. The North American Aerospace Defense Command has escalated to DEFCON 3 due to a critical international crisis. Canada is currently withholding the global maple syrup reserves from global distribution, prompting heightened tensions across allied nations with the armament of nuclear missiles threatened against Canada. This defensive readiness condition signals increased military alertness. Canadian Prime Minister Jacques Poutine has issued a statement saying this aggression will not be tolerated and urges all Canadians to stay vigilant, follow local news for updates, and be prepared to respond to further instructions if necessary. That doesn't sound good. Oh, man. Hey, Bruce. Hey. Hey, hey Bruce. How are you? Okay, I got a pumpkin awesome. for you. Awesome. Happy Halloween. Hey. From my garden. You grew that? I did grow it. Wow, that's a... That's a good looking pumpkin, man. I like it. Yeah. Awesome. You did good. Well, it does yeah. it. It does it itself. Yeah. <laughs> have you heard? Have you heard what's been going on lately? Yeah. Like, what the hell's going on out there? Oh my God. I, I, I'm getting a little frightened. It's like, really, all this over maple syrup? Yeah. Maple syrup. Our natural resources. Yeah. They're coming to pillage all this, shit, man. And. I, I, I'm getting a little frightened, you know? But I, I'm not worried too, too much. Why? Well, <laughs> I got an awesome collection of alcohol to get me through this. <laughs> We're all set. I've got, I've got a food storage um, with water and yeah, all oh, kinds that's right. of things Bruce's, that I like. Bruce has been preparing for this for oh, like I've the been, last I've been 25 preparing years. This for the, I don't know, I've got, I got water jugs in there that might be good for bathing now because that's how old they are. Is you it know? even? How, well, I've dated how them. How old are I, they? Well, though? I don't know. I've dated them. I've dated some of them. I've been doing this for a long, long time. There's one from 2014, so that's 10 years old. You don't need to worry because this place is a fortress. When we built the bar, <laughs> it became a bunker. Also, you know. I'm like, I'm like, I'm way down in the earth here. And I have no worries. This is, this is, this is a fortress. It, the, 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 it's not going anywhere. If the bombs drop, I won't have to go to work anymore. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, Brucey, I'm a little skeptical. People have been saying it's gonna be the end of the world for years now. Been hearing this for quite some time. Yeah, I know for thousands and thousands of years. In the swirling chaos of today's world, I find myself questioning the direction we're heading. Whether it's political instability, environmental disasters, or social upheaval, it's easy to feel overwhelmed and lost in the storm. We stand at a crossroads where our collective actions and choices will shape the future. Will we rise to meet these challenges, driven by innovation and a renewed sense of community? Or will we succumb to the weight of our divisions? 
I wonder too, is it mere coincidence or something more profound? You know, in the Bible, in the book of Revelations, also known uh, as uh, the Apocalypse of John, stands the grand finale of the New Testament. Written around 95, 96 AD, this foreboding text is brimming with vivid imagery and prophecies about the end of time. Picture the four horsemen of the apocalypse thundering across the sky, the ominous beast and the ultimate showdown between good and evil. Over the centuries, its rich symbolic language has sparked countless interpretations, with some viewing it as a roadmap to future events, while others see it as a deep metaphor for spiritual battles. Then there's Nostradamus, the 16th century French astrologer and physician, renowned for his book Les Prophéties. This fascinating collection of 942 poetic verses is said to predict future events. Shrouded in mystery, his words have been interpreted to foresee a multitude of significant events, from wars and natural disasters to the rise and fall of leaders. Despite ongoing skepticism around the accuracy of his predictions, Nostradamus continues to captivate those intrigued by prophecy and the apocalypse. In his 1555 writings, he predicted the world would end in 3797. However, a recent theory suggests that subtracting 1555 from 3797 places the end of the world in 2242. And let's not forget about the Cuban Missile Crisis in October 1962. This intense 13-day standoff between the United States and the Soviet Union over Soviet ballistic missiles stationed in Cuba brought the world to the brink of a nuclear war. <laughs> you know, I remember when my mother heard the news. I, I mean, I was sitting there listening to the radio too. <laughs> and she quickly got up off her chair and she went outside to bring in the wash from the clothesline. She told me she didn't want to get any radiation fallout on her clean clothes. <laughs> too funny. <laughs> anyway, it was the closest the Cold War ever came to erupting into a full-scale nuclear conflict. The crisis concluded with a negotiated agreement in which the Soviets would dismantle their weapons in Cuba in exchange for the U.S. promising not to invade Cuba and agreeing to remove American missiles from Turkey. <laughs> this event emphasized the dreadful potential for nuclear annihilation. Wow. Numerous apocalyptic scenarios have been proposed by individuals and various religious beliefs. Take the Y2K bug, for example. <laughs> As the year 2000 approached, there was widespread fear that a computer glitch could lead to global technological chaos, disrupting everything from banking systems to power grids, potentially causing airplanes to fall from the sky. Whoa! <laughs> Thankfully, the world didn't end, but it certainly kept everyone on edge. Then there was the 2012 phenomenon rooted in the ancient Mayan calendar. Many believe that December 21st, 2012 would mark the end of the world. This prediction sparked a mix of fascination and dread, with people around the globe anxiously waiting for that fateful day. <laughs> Spoiler alert, <laughs> we're still here. <laughs> so the fact that we're still here calls for a cocktail. Let's make one I call the apocalypse. Attention, NORAD has escalated its readiness level to DEFCON 4 in response to an urgent international crisis. Multiple nuclear-capable nations have reportedly directed missile systems at Canada, marking a severe escalation in global tensions. Citizens are strongly advised to remain indoors, avoid unnecessary travel, and closely monitor all emergency broadcasts for real-time updates. Whoa, that's concerning. Are you still with us? I hope so. <laughs> Or'd you get like uh, vaporized? Woo! Uh, speaking of getting vaporized, let's make an apocalyptic cocktail. Um, 
I'm gonna start with some uh, wild turkey rare breed. This barrel-proof Kentucky straight bourbon greets you with an enticing aroma of toffee, vanilla, baking spices, and sweet corn. You'll find hints of burnt brown sugar, butterscotch, and a trace of orange peel joining the party, <laughs> all leading to a full-bodied mouth-coating experience with a warm and perfectly balanced finish. At 58.4% ABV, or 116.8 proof, it's a sip worth savoring and a rare breed indeed. This was gifted to me by Terry, Terry M. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, means a lot, means a lot. It's a lovely whiskey. One and a half ounces in our mixing glass. Next is our uh, wonderful Domaine de Canton. That's our ginger liqueur. We're gonna go with uh, half an ounce. Amaro Nonino. This is such a lovely Amaro. Crafted from infused aged grappa, Amaro Nonino is a delicate bittersweet blend of baked marmalade, licorice, minty herbs, and warming spices that has a long, mellow finish. It's delightful on its own, a perfect introduction to Amaro, and incredibly versatile in cocktails or a spritz. At 35% ABV, or 70 proof, Amaro Nonino is very complex with delicate notes of apricot, thyme, and saffron. One of my favorites. A quarter ounce. And we're gonna follow that up with our cherry, cherry syrup we made last time. We're going for a full ounce. This is absolutely delicious. Oh, that changes the color, doesn't it? <laughs> if you wanna know how to make your own cherry syrup, you know, check out the link. We're gonna ice this up now. Pop in lots of ice. Don't be afraid of ice. Ice is my friend. <laughs> and we're gonna stir, we're gonna stir until it's well chilled, well diluted. I don't know, 15, 20 seconds or so. Yeah, boom. What was that, foreshadowing? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, I think we're almost there. Let's check it out. Mm. I'm there. Okay, we need a we need a glass. Swap that for that. I'm gonna fill this with a little bit of ice. One big cube. A couple little cubes. That's good. We're just going to uh, strain this out into this wonderful rock glass. Oh yeah. Chocolate bitters. Ah, right here. Chocolate bitters. We are going to add one, two. Two good dashes. Garnish, we're gonna garnish with a little orange rind and cherry. And the final touch, <laughs> we're gonna burn a little bit of cinnamon. Spark it up, <laughs> spark it up. Over top. Yeah, not too much, just enough. And there you have my apocalyptic cocktail. I get the burnt cinnamon right off the bat and, uh, and the chocolate bitters. Mm. My Apocalypse Cocktail offers a rich and warming experience with a harmonious blend of spicy, sweet, and slightly bitter notes. The finish is smooth with a lingering taste that is both complex and satisfying. The garnish adds a touch of citrus and a hint of smokiness, enhancing the overall sensory experience. To put it simply, this is a complex, 
well-balanced cocktail with layers of sweetness, spice, bitterness, and warmth. Perfect for the end of times. Oh, that's my kind of uh, apocalypse, <laughs> end of days kind of cocktail for me. Speaking of which, we should uh, see what's going on here. Emergency alert, Canada is under nuclear attack. Multiple missiles have been launched and are expected to reach Canadian soil within moments. Holy shit, they actually did it. <gasps> yeah, they launched. In response, Canada has initiated a full-scale counterattack. All citizens should take immediate shelter in the safest location available, preferably an underground or heavily reinforced space away from windows. Use any materials on hand to shield yourself from radiation. This is a life-threatening situation, and there will be no further warning. Remain sheltered, stay calm, and protect yourselves and your loved ones. Shit. That's it. What the hell's the matter with everything? It's all over, man. We gotta get out of here. Oh, no, 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 no. No, we gotta go. Stay here. No. Uh, I got all the booze you could ever want. We oh, have Bruce, our cat, we Bruce. We I gotta get out of the here. cat. Well, I got cats. Yeah, they're here with you. <laughs> well, bring your cat, go home. Bring your cat back. I don't know, man. Cat will be fine. Bruce, we gotta go. I got laundry on the line. We gotta take the cat. We, we gotta go. <sighs> okay, well, good luck. Keep the pumpkin. What just happened? Hello? Hello? Seconds, minutes, hours. They crawl by on hands and knees for bartender Bruce, who looks for a spark in the ashes of a dead world. Bartender Bruce on an eight-hour tour of a graveyard. Aaron? Aaron? Viv? Viv? Where, are Where are you? you? They're all dead. But I am alive.
I was in the bar, and I'm the last man on earth. I don't know whether I want to live. It's so lonely. I'm sure I'll be, I'll be forgiven. be more there must be more yeah <laughs> Look at what I got here. Oh my god, all my favorites. Ah! Life is grand. Life is grand. Oh yeah. I got everything I need. Oh yeah. <laughs> this is awesome. It's not so bad. I'm all alone, but it's not too bad. What more could I want? I've got all the food I need. I've got the water. I got all the booze I need. I got oh, I got all the ice I need. Oh, speaking of ice, I, I need some more. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love ice. I got everything I need. Look at me, I've got Eldorado 12 year old. <laughs> and it's almost full, this bottle. A lot, uh, 40, uh, some more whiskey, some more whiskey. <laughs> uh, banana liqueur, meh, I can use it, why not? And I've got my favorite, 40 Creek. Oh, I love this whiskey, <laughs> it's incredible. And oh, look at this. time now all the time in the world how will I dilute my drinks now it's not fair not fair the best laid plans of mice and men and bartender Bruce the old bartender who wanted nothing but time bartender Bruce now just a part of a smashed landscape just a piece of the rubble just a fragment of what man has deeded to himself Bartender Bruce in the cocktail zone. Stop. 